the value of New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Company has come from our experienced, dedicated team for almost a century. Auto and homeowners insurance for employees of New Jersey Business and Industry Association members. Deposit accounts and loans for the general public through NJM Bank. We're here to work for the interests of our customers, not stockholders. More about a unique kind of relationship is at NJM.com. NJM, where experience pays dividends. Clean energy for New Jersey business, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities and New Jersey's Clean Energy Program. St. Peter's College, education, one student at a time. Barnabas Health and Sun National Bank. Welcome to this very special edition of Caucus. I'm Steve Adubato, right here in the studio to examine ways that New Jersey businesses can be more energy efficient and, of course, save money are Gary Finger, the business ombudsman for the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, David Klockner, chief operating officer, Interactive Solutions, an independent energy engineering and consulting firm, uh, Josh Avedon, who is a member of Avedon Management, a family-owned commercial and real estate company, and Lee Davis, president of the Northeast Region, NRG Energy, a wholesale power generation company. I want to thank you all for joining us. First thing I want to ask you, uh, Gary, is this. The program you're offering is what, and who are you offering it to? We're bringing out the, the programs that are available through the Office of Clean Energy for uh, their energy efficient methods. We bring it out to the business community, large and small. Which programs, be specific? The, we have four basic programs. Uh, they're all under the Smart Start uh, incentive programs. It could be Smart Start Buildings, which is a prescriptive uh, program nature. It's a pay for performance. What does uh, that mean, pay performance? Pay for performance is a whole building approach to taking a look at reducing energy by at least 15%. Uh, and we would have uh, auditors who would go in and uh, they would be able to evaluate different methods that they could do, uh, upgrades that they could take advantage of to cut their energy costs and take advantage of the incentives that offer through the office. Who's taking energy. advantage? We, uh, we, if it's pay for performance, it could be multifamily, it could be hospitals, it could be grocery stores, manufacturing, larger facilities, usually in excess of about 100 kilowatts. Josh, how do you guys interact with them? So um, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to participate with uh, the pay for performance program. At you use family business. We are a family owned business right. of industrial and commercial real estate. And uh, we have uh, very large facilities, many of them that have cooler and freezer components to them that are big consumers of electric energy. How'd you hook up with them? How'd you even know, hey, that's what these guys do? Right. Uh, so I was very familiar with clean energy and some of their other programs that I fit into um, regarding uh, switching out inefficient lighting for more efficient T5 lighting with motion sensors. T5. T5. What is that? Uh, T5, it's a generation of bulb um, that is more efficient, um, doesn't give off much heat. So it's a, it's, it's a newer type of bulb, more modern. So you knew they could help you there? I knew they could help me in that capacity. Uh, when I looked at this particular building and the amount of energy that it consumed, I thought that there was more that could be done. Let's play this out a little bit because we were talking about this before we got mm -hmm. in the air, Gary. It's interesting, when you're with the government, it, I imagine it's very hard. There's always that joke, I'm here for, they don't say I'm here from Trenton, I'm, I'm here from Washington, uh, I'm from Washington, I'm here to help. And there's a joke, right? But you are from the state capitol, and you are there to help, and you're trying to help. Why else would we be doing this program, and why else would you be doing that? How hard do you think it is to convince people that a government entity, a quasi, if you will, government entity, the Board of Public Utilities, Clean Energy Program, is actually there to help? Well, it's actually a, a difficult task. Uh, prior to my role at Interactive, I actually worked with the Commercial Industrial Program promoting these programs, so I'm pretty intimate with them. Um, it, it's difficult to get across to a customer that there is incentives available, and then it's difficult to get those incentives to the customer. So it's a process that you have to go through, but it's one that can be very lucrative for for a commercial industrial or a multifamily facility if, uh, if they can make it through that process and qualify. Tell us the role that your organization would play in helping an organization make this happen. 
we're currently a pay for performance uh, provider in the state, one of uh, many qualified firms. We currently have eight facilities that are running through the program right now. We've made available uh, well over million, in, in the millions of dollars of incentives to those customers for implementing large scale energy conservation projects. Lee, jump in and tell us your role here. Sure. Give us a comment, because um, I know you're involved in some very specific projects. Absolutely. Um, uh, NRG Energy provides energy solutions to customers. And one of the direct roles that we played you know, in relation to the BPU was the Princeton Hospital in Plainsboro, New Jersey. Uh, our headquarters are maybe a quarter of a mile away from this hospital, and we provide a combined heat and power solution to that hospital. And it would not have been created without the BPU being directly involved in this. So it's a huge win for the hospital, and it's a huge win for NRG as well. How'd you make that happen? I mean, you're, you're working for the hospital, which is or is not open as we speak. Uh, it is in the process of okay. uh, uh, finishing its build out. Uh, and we are actually in the process of finishing our build out alongside the hospital as well. So it's okay, so you're exciting. dealing with them. Yes. You're employed under contract to the hospital. That's exactly right. You're giving right. them advice. Yeah, and the genesis of this started really with the hospital being approached by the BPU. Uh, the hospital was pursuing a, um, a solution for its energy needs that had multi-tiers to it. And the BPU approached the hospital and said, well, wait a second, what have you did all of your needs through one provider, combined it all, and made it much more efficient for yourselves? And if you did that, you know, the BPU can help you with it. So, Gary, is that, is that how it went down? Uh, absolutely. Uh, part of what the role is is to identify maximizing as many of the incentives as you possibly can to become as efficient as you can. That helps everybody. But play this out for a little bit. Uh, I bet people watching are saying, well, how do they pick? Why do they pick that hospital? Why not some other hospital? Why not this business, that business? Because everyone's so suspicious of relationships, if you will. Like, you know, who do you know? How do you pick? It's not really a question of us picking. It, in some cases, it's the hospital or the company they may start to work with approaching the BPO. But in this case, you were saying that the BPU said, hey, we want to help you here. Yeah, I think it was more of an education process to make sure that the hospital knew its alternatives. In fact, uh, you know, when the BPU had got involved with this process, the hospital turned around and ran a process to pick the least cost solution for a combined heat power, which we happened to win. Uh, but it was still a competitive process that kind of uh, emerged from that discussion that the BPU had held uh, with the hospital. How much could they save? Uh, you know, we believe it's going to be tens of millions of dollars. Tens of millions of dollars? Just for one hospital. And, uh, How much? Oh, over what period of time? Uh, you know, it's over the life of the project. You know, we we see the life of this project being, you know, on order of 15 plus years. How much does that project cost? Uh, cost 24 million dollars. 24 million. In this economy, devil's advocate, someone says, "Come on, I love that idea, and I would like to be more energy efficient. I'd like to save money. I want to contribute to society in terms of energy consumption in a better way. Come on, I can't afford that. Do you hear that sometimes? Oh, absolutely." What do you it's, say it's, it's really more a question of we can help you reduce your energy bill. I'm going to show you how you can do that. If it's a small business, I'll talk to the small business groups. It might be a question of we'll work with a direct install program. The what? They, it's called direct install. Direct install. It deals By the way, log on to our website. We'll hook you up with the Board of Public Utilities so you can get a more uh, detailed description of a lot of these initiatives. Direct install is going to go after the smaller business climate. Um, where they don't have a, a large staff, but they need to get some upgrades. So we're going to have our, a contractor, a pre-approved contractor, go in. A pre-approved contractor, what does that mean? Pre-approved, they've already gone through a bidding process with our program managers at uh, TRC. We have a list of contractors that are approved in various regions throughout the state. Uh, they'll go into a business entity and identify areas that need to be upgraded, and the BPU pays for 60% of those costs. This is interesting. Stuff. By the way, you log on to the website. Putting up the BPU website as well, folks, if we could, the Clean Energy Initiative. Um, talk to us about, uh, about this part of it. Um, you've been involved in clean energy since the 90s. Correct. What's changed in the last 15 years? Well, uh, there were a number of predecessor programs to the current list of programs. Uh, some of those were the most forth-thinking programs uh, available at the time, and really put New Jersey right up at the forefront of the nationwide energy efficiency programs. We have been uh, very progressive in implementing programs. 
the, uh, the reason is, is that New Jersey really doesn't have any natural resources except for maybe the sun. Uh, a lot of states have oil, they have coal, they have gas, they have other uh, resources to uh, help uh, drive down those energy costs for their customers. In New Jersey, they do it through policy, and uh, I think they've been very proactive. The recent programs are actually some of the, the pay for performance program specifically is one of the best programs in the country right now. Try one more time for pay for perform pay for performance because it's so interesting. Just uh, terms, expressions get stuck in people's heads. Someone could hear this and think you're talking about pay to play, which is actually you can watch that on Capital Report, our political program. That is not pay for performance is a very positive thing that says what? That the state is actually paying you for the energy that you prove to them that you save. In other words, we have to measure the amount of energy that you save, and there is a payment associated with that amount of energy. Which it's creates tremendous incentive. It's huge. Right? And it, cre it really creates a demand for the product. You know, you clean up the environment and you make it much more efficient. And it's a win-win for everyone when you can do that. It's a great when, when, when other folks find out, Josh, what you're doing and your relationship with the Board of Public Utilities and the Clean Energy Program, how curious are folks about how you did it, and is it, a, is it, how much of this is word of mouth? Sure, well, a lot of it is word of mouth, and a lot of it is also um, us as a family-owned business putting it out there. Um, it's very important for us that our tenants understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. You, how do you explain that to them? Well, uh, it, was a, uh, it was a painful process, unfortunately, because <laughs> these uh, companies are active, very active. Some of them run 24-hour shifts, and I have to find a way to get into their space while it's, it's active and occupied and continue these energy upgrades. Would you, let me ask you something. The upgrades again, real quick, what did you yeah. do? I have a laundry list. Go ahead, real quick. All right, we did uh, uh, insulation. We uh, improved the envelope of the building itself. You improved the envelope of the building. The envelope. Um, a lot of our properties are uh, older in nature, and when they were built, unfortunately, no regard was given to uh, energy efficiency. Right. So... Um, a lot of them had uh, minimal insulation on the roof and the, and the exterior walls. So that was, uh, that was one of the upgrades, um, improving the envelope itself. Another upgrade was um, automation controls to the refrigeration and freezer equipment. Uh, give us the capability of remotely controlling these units, um, changing temperatures, putting them into different defrost cycles. Um, another uh, energy upgrade we did was the lighting, as I mentioned before. Right. Uh, this was, I guess you could say, the low-hanging fruit. You mean uh, it was easier? Meaning that it gives you the most bang for your buck. Right. And by the way, do you have any sense of how much you save? Uh, I, I do, I do. And, and uh, it's a, a new program that, that we, we just finished. So we're still uh, in the process of monitoring our bills. But we're looking at a, a excess of 25% on our utility bills. Get out of here. And we were aiming for 15%, as Gary mentioned so you're before. Above that. We are above it. We are above it. Hard numbers? Yeah, uh, hard numbers. Give me a hard number. Um, I'll give you a hard number. Uh, last year, uh, July 2010, uh, we had spent about $110,000 in electricity alone at the building. So 25%, that's huge. And, and th this year, we're, we're spending about 30000 Gary, help me here. Is this the way you sell the program by Josh's experience, his family-owned company, them spreading the word? I know there are other ways to do it. By the way, we're part of that initiative as well. That's what these programs are intended to do. We have, frankly, a grant through the Board of Public Utilities and the Clean Energy Program to do public education. The full disclosure, which is how you see the underwriting at the beginning of the program. But we can only do so much. The media can only do so much. Is it largely telling stories? It's huge. It's a success story. When you start, when people can relate to the fact that this is a real business that has a dramatic savings and they can experience the same. Why aren't people just banging your door down saying, hey, we want in? Or are they? And no, they're not. I wish they were. Uh, in Can a lot you of cases, it if they do, the money's there. We have. Ex explain the part about the money, because people always say, "Hey, where's this money coming from? Where's the money coming from?" I spoke to Lee Solomon, the president, many mm -hmm. times about this. Help people understand again, Gary. Okay, where's the money coming from for these terrific initiatives? All the ratepayers in the state of New Jersey pay something called a societal benefit charge. A societal benefit charge. So they get their energy bill. There's a specific line item on that bill. Can they find it? Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. And there is a, a small percentage that is paid for these incentive programs. 
And why it becomes a societal benefit is because we need to reduce the amount of energy that we're using statewide. Do you know how much that percentage is? Uh, it's uh, minuscule. It's minuscule. It's and so it's because of the 8 million people in the state, plus it adds up. It's significantly. And so there's a pot of money to be used for this. Are you actually saying that, that there's money that isn't being used because the demand isn't as great as we'd like it to be? There's monies that have, that have still been allocated. Because there are high to standards take... to be able to get access to it. I do know that. So go ahead. Standards are really not that high. If you've got a business operation and it's an older facility, it's your money. That's pretty much how I promote it. What do you mean it's your money? You've paid into this program. Your societal benefit charge. So it's Josh's family's it. money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And all we're trying to do is to say, here's an opportunity to, to recapture some of that investment that you've made. You, you know, i got to tell you, you do a program like this for 20 years, and all of a sudden you sit there and go, it sounds too good to be true. But is there a catch that I'm not getting here? This is the program. Well, part of the difficulty is that in order to participate in the program, you have to make an investment in your energy infrastructure in your building. So we went to a okay. hospital, okay, and we had a beautiful project. It was a four-year payback. They were going to get two. Oh, what do you mean four-year payback? Help me on that. Uh, meaning the mean? energy savings would pay back the principal balance right. of what they would invest. But you've got to make the investment. You've got to make the investment. So we would be able, be able to bring $250,000 to the table from the Pay for Performance program, but they had to invest close to a million dollars to do that. What was that conversation that. like? Uh, it was, it was um, at the time, it was with a customer who had double incentives through ARRA available to them. Whoa, so, ARRA. Uh, <laughs> well, you American, guys have your own language and everything. <laughs> the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Oh, I know what that is. Right. Okay. So, so we actually were able to double the incentives, oh, and they still wouldn't go, wouldn't go forward with the project. They wouldn't. No. So you're sitting there talking to obviously the CEO, the CFO, the people controlling of a major hospital, and they said, "We'll pass. We don't have the seven hundred thousand dollars to invest." <laughs> or uh, to be able to move forward with the project so that we can get this million two project completed. Lee, I hear you smiling. Hey, you laughing. know, I will tell you, it, it is such a big problem. And, you know, I think if you look at what we did with the Princeton Hospital, Princeton Hospital was in the same situation. We don't have $24 million to invest in a part of the business that's really not directly right. related to patients. It wasn't care. like they had it sitting there saying, hey, what are we going to do with this $24 that's million? exactly right. Did, and, did you had to convince them of the smartness, if you will, of this investment. Well, and here's what we did. We, we actually made the investment, and we're charging them, you know, for the cost of the energy that we're supplying from that investment over time. Hold on, back, for, back up for a second. The $24 million, mm -hmm. you gave them some of it. Correct. But That's the right. hospital had to put up some of its own. That's right. So what the hospital did was that they contracted directly with us for their energy needs. So we were actually their agent in making that investment. So it's such a, it, you know, it, it takes so many parties sometimes to actually make these investments happen. And you're right. I mean, there's a logjam of investment right now because people just can't afford to make that. Yeah, let, let's play this out for a second. Um, I'm thinking to myself, as we do this program toward the end of uh, 2011, I, I'm thinking, all right, I imagine it is a different sell. It's, the uh, economics are different. The discussion is different. Every, the, everything about it is different given the incredibly difficult economic times in which you live. And here's the paradox in my mind. On one hand, it, it may be harder to get access to the initial investment, right? But because of the economic times in which we live, there, is, there should be more pressure than ever before to find ways to save money. And if you don't spend it, there's no way to save it. In fact, it's going to go out literally out the window, no? Absolutely. I know I'm oversimplifying it, Gary. No, that's exactly what the case is. I mean, they need to make a small investment in order to save over the long term. And the savings that, that they could reap would be phenomenal. And we have to convince them of why that's important. Are, are you working with banks and other financial institutions? Uh, so someone says, okay, I don't have the cash on hand right now. I don't have the capital. But I know I need to make the investment. I want to make the investment. And it's $4 million, five, ten, dollars whatever it is. Um, are, are financial institutions getting the value of this? Are they involved? Because if, if a company or an organization says, we don't have the cash laying on the sidelines, it can't happen unless they find another way to get it. Help me on this. Well, the answer is that many of them are involved. However, the credit restrictions are very difficult. Those thresholds are very difficult to meet. And therefore, a number of the customers who 
And it doesn't always work out where the customer who wants to make the investment is the customer that's credit worthy because typically that credit worthy customer will make the investment if they're able to. Right. It's the ones who want to make the investment but aren't credit worthy, then they, oh then they can't make it. It's interesting. And by the way, it, what's interesting about this is that BPU connected to the government, in many ways government agencies dealing with banks, putting more pressure on banks to raise the standards on who you give a loan to and what you give a loan for. Correct. Jump back in. Well, I was going to say that I, I think that these banks should be more involved. Um, a, a private family company like ourselves, uh, it, it's our money that, that we're putting up. That's blood money. It's blood money, and it's a hard <clears throat> pill to swallow um, to lay out that amount of cash. Now, on paper, it looks great. My brother, who else in your family is involved? Here? Uh, it's my father. It's you and your dad. That's right. You and your dad sit there, and you say, Dad, trust me on this. <laughs> right. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, we were, right. We were, I could interpret that a lot of different ways. Sure, yeah. sure. I, I, I've, I've I said know it if I said to my dad, "Trust me on this," it wouldn't go so easily. No. But um, <laughs> on your end, did he really just trust you? Well, it, it did take a lot of convincing, and and uh, you know he did buy into it as well. He did right away. Um, no, and and I didn't buy into it right away either. I need to be convinced that these measures were going to work, that these projections of savings were real. And, um, you know, it's nice that, uh, you know, the BPU offers these kinds of programs, but you have to lay out the money, like, like we had discussed. You have to do the initial investment with a, a, a piece of paper that's a promise right. saying that we'll sure. give you the money. Um, but initially, it's, it's, it's out of pocket. You know, it's interesting here. Now, your, your business is of a certain size. So, so here's the thing. Different organizations, different sizes, different budgets, different capacity to make investment. Fair to say, Gary, that virtually any business of any size in any sector really has to be dealing with this. Absolutely. No one's immune. Correct. So someone says, well, I'm not, I'm not some hospital that's starting up and in an area where we're not, we're not in that kind of situation. We don't have to deal with this. You say what to them? Well, if it's a smaller company, the purpose of the program is to do a whole building audit of the facility that they're in. So you analyze it and you, it gets sized based on that facility. We did a nice arena. We put in uh, a low E ceiling and their bills were, were immediately 30% lower. This is a sports arena. Sports arena, yeah. So, I mean, that, and that was Do a great- Do that again, you did what? We, we put in what's called a low E ceiling. It's a vapor barrier between the roof and the ice that creates a, 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 set, um, a space of dead air. Right. And then that dead air creates a huge insulator between the ice and the hot sun, and 30% like that. Good stuff. What would you say to those, Gary, who say, you know, sounds like a great program, but, I mean, I've heard some criticism saying, criticism saying that the regulations are too tough, that the BPU wants to do this, clean energy program wants to do this, but that's too tough. It's not that easy to get it done. The only thing I would say to that is let's give it a try. I'll work with you personally if I need to. The direct install program, it is a turnkey operation. Whoa, what does that mean, turnkey? Contractors can do all the work. Once, the con once they've signed up with the contractor, they're going to go through the installation process. The incentives are going to go to them. Uh, the business at that point, they're only going to be paying for 40%. So that becomes their commitment. You know, it's interesting. People say we, need, we want less government regulation, less government involvement in our lives, particularly business. You know, you talk to some folks, and I was at a chamber meeting recently, and I said, what's the number one thing you want government to do? And they said, get out of our lives. Well, the BPU is in your life. This program means they're in your life. So it's a, it's a, it's a simple knee-jerk reaction to say we want less government, get out of our life. But how else would a, pri how would a private entity, how would a corporation do this? How would a business do this on their own? I guess they could, but it would be tough. Well, in, in our case, it would have been extremely difficult for NRG to make that investment and extremely difficult for Princeton to make the same type of commitment without having a backstop such as the BPU. So it's interesting, when people say they want less government, <laughs> they don't mean this. <laughs> they mean some other less government. Why are you smiling? I, I agree with your statement. I, I'm not making, we have PBS, we do not make statements. We just <laughs> raise rhetorical questions. Um, <laughs> your question. But, but I just find that interesting that people say we want less, but I'm thinking. They want the hurdles removed. What do you mean? They, the obstacles to get to, to the finish line on any of these programs has been uh, historically difficult. And that's why a lot of people back away from it. But if they can see that it's a simpler process and that we can see that you can do a direct install program and have a payback be done in the four months. The direct install program. It could be done in four months. 
that's pretty quick. It's a pretty fast turnaround. Bottom line, Gary, as we get out of here, you're saying we can help you get this done. Thank you all very much. Complex stuff. You made it uh, more understandable. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 20 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities and New Jersey's Clean Energy Program, St. Peter's College, Education, One Student at a Time, Barnabas Health, and Sun National Bank. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, and The Star Ledger and NJ.com, Everything Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Don't miss Steve Adubato and co-host Raphael P. Rahman each week on New Jersey Capital Report. Airing on NJTV 13 and WHYY. Check your local listings. Since 1865, we've sought to deliver the very best possible medical care to the people of New Jersey. Today, you'll find that mission made real in every facet of the state's largest healthcare system, with world-renowned doctors using the most advanced technology and techniques, pioneering a new path to better care. We are Barnabas Health, a new name for the next great century of medicine. Barnabas Health, every day extraordinary.